All right, let's get the show on the road. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly 30-minute webinar. My name is Matt Sykes, a systems engineer here at Verify, and I'll be your host in today's webinar. Today, we're joined with Mike Stratton, AKA Magic Mike, another systems engineer here at Verify. For today's webinar, we're gonna cover the new features in Verify's upcoming 12.2 release. We're gonna get started with a quick overview of what our, our company and what we do. We'll jump into a live demo, demo where Mike will guide us through the new features, bells and whistles, and enhancements in the new 12.2 version due out later next month. We will pause for Q&A and get some of your questions answered. During the demo though, if you have any other questions that you want to ask, if you have any questions related to the content, feel free to go ahead and ask them in the Q&A panel in the bottom right, not the WebEx chat. And after the Q&A, we will reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around and see what you may have won. Okay, a quick overview of Verify. Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, remote phone control, change management. But today we're going to be focus on, focusing on the new features in our 12.2 version. If you have any other questions on any other of our features, we can most definitely take them offline and get those answered. Okay, before we get started, we want to announce that Verify now offers a new service that provides managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's SC or systems engineer team will be engaged in a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, unassisted reporting, dashboarding configuration, and remote monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify systems engineer to do all the heavy lifting of the report creation, dashboard generations, and modifications. So if there's any inf for, if for any further additional information, please contact us and we'll be glad to speak with you more in depth about our new service offering. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the demo. Mike, Magic Mike here is gonna get us started. So let's go, let's go ahead and flex it out, Mike. Let's see all those new enhancements. Excellent, all right, thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone, uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. My name is, oh, you know what? I should probably share my screen. I'm passing it right to you now, sir. Yeah. Should have it. Go get them, sir. Boom. There we go. All right, everyone. Again, thanks for hanging out with us today. My name is Mike. I am a systems engineer with Verify. I'm going to be kind of uh, covering some of the new features included in the upcoming 12.2 release. 12.2 um, is not available yet. Uh, we plan on starting the beta testing in about some time in September, likely after Labor Day. Um, if you are interested in signing up for the 12.2 EFT, shoot us an email at beta at verify.com or reach out to um, the support team or your account manager for more information. So what I'm running here is a 12.2 uh, pre-release in my lab. It's kind of based on 12.17 um, with many of the 12.2 features included. I'm going to cover four of the new features at a kind of a high level. Um, once 12.2 is available, we'll have a separate webinar or separate webinars for each of the new features that kind of dive more into depth and cover um, each of the new features on, on a more one-on-one -on -one case. So the First feature I'll cover is um, an update to the DID management uh, portion of the software. We've included um, support for international numbers. So when you go into and configure a new block, or when you create a new DID block, you'll now see under the number info, uh, before in like 1217 earlier, you would just have the option of selecting um, plus one as the country code. And now you have um, all of the countries uh, available, everything from Afghanistan to uh, Zimbabwe. So this will be included in 12.2. Moving forward, um, also available in 12.2, um, including or we're releasing the report repository. This will be av available for both Cisco CDR and UCCX reports. When you jump into the reports menu, you'll see um, what you won't, what you, You'll see in the new version, you'll have an option to manage with the manage screen is the old report menu and you also have the repository screen. This screen here or this, uh, this link will take you to the repository menu. And from here, you can re-download any of your previously run reports. Um, you can search for history from either yourself or, or if you're an administrator, you can also search for report history for other users. Um, you can filter by the report name. You can filter when the, uh, the date and time of when the report was generated. You can also filter by which cluster the report was run for. Um, down below, you can click the link or clicking the link here, we'll just go ahead and you know, download a copy of the report. Um, and then the rest of the chart, you'll see the file size, um, the cluster that uh, the report was run against, when the report or like the search time window for the report, uh, which user ran the reports, the delivery method, 
um, whether or not or see when the report was requested and if it was completed. And then over to the right, you'll have um, the URL access. This is kind of like a, a permalink or like the permalink that you have that, or that we have available um, for the dashboard and widgets. Um, turning on URL access will enable the link option and clicking on it here, if you click on it and you copy and paste, it'll take you to um, the software and then it'll go ahead and download a copy of the report automatically. So this is good if you have users who you wanna give them a copy of a report, but you don't want them to have access to the software. Um, to the right, you can go ahead, this, this option of this, this icon here will download the report and this lock icon, um, whether it's on or off, if it's on, it'll stop the report from being deleted or purged. If it's on, it'll allow the user or any administrator or user to delete the report. Um, this is for either a user coming in and manually deleting the report, or we also have a built-in uh, disk space threshold um, as, because these reports are being stored locally on the server. As the threshold is reached, you know, older reports will be deleted from the system. If you have a report that's important, think of it maybe like uh, for legal reasons or just for some sort of historical reporting reason, you can go ahead, um, lock the report and it won't be deleted. Like for example, um, you know, I delete these three. I just delete everything. You know, those reports are gone and, and the rest of the reports in the list have been, have been saved. So um, other uh, future development on this feature, the engineering team is working on the ability for the other users um, to be where you can filter on specific users. In 12.2 right now, you can um, either filter on reports run by yourself or for other users. So if you have multiple users running reports, you will get all of the users. When you select this option, they are working on the ability to uh, select specific users. That way you can see someone's report history. Um, it may be released in 12.2. If not, it'll, it'll be released in a future update. Um, going over um, for the repository, there's some new application settings. And if you go under into application, you'll see in the, under the report history settings, you can um, select, you know, settings like the, the protocol and then, then the, the host and the, the port used for accessing the, the, um, the report files. And then um, here you have the settings for the individual, for the CDR and, and the U6 reports. You can select the, um, the amount of disk space allocated to the CDR or to the UCCX reports. Um, and then again, once that, you know, once that threshold is reached, the system will start to purge reports to, um, to save space. Um, going back to the repository, um, or when you run a report, um, a new entry will be created in this list, but also when in future release, when you run the report, we will have the option, um, when emailing a report, you will have the option to either del uh, deliver the report via an attachment or uh, a link back to the repository. Okay. All right, option number three. Um, in 12.2 is what we're calling the UCCX time interval reporting. Jump over there. So much like the time interval reporting that we have available for the CUCM reports, we have now we have the ability to uh, group call data by time. Um, I've set it, it'll be available for both the agent and the CSQ based reports. When accessing a report, whether it's one that you've already have created or a new one, um, the menu will look a little bit different. Here, you're going to have um, the ability to add content. And adding the content, you can give it a name, and then you can select from three different options. The summary stats table is what we had before, um, just where all the data is grouped into one lump, lump sum for each column type. Um, now we have the ability to either include a, a chart or a graph um, or a time period statistics table, which is uh, grouping the table based upon a, a time value. So I'll show you that real quick. Um, so here is the time period stats. This one, what I have set up right here, I'm grouping or I'm still, my time unit is hour of the day, but you can select anything from as, as early as a quarter hour all the way up to a month. And then down below, you can select anything uh, from your know, total count, handle count, abandon count, all the same values that we have available in the report. The time period chart is a, a graphical uh, display only available in PDF reports. You can select either like a bar graph or a line graph, same options, everything from quarter to quarter hour of the day to a month, and then you can select any of the different val you know, values given to us by, by contact center. You don't have to, you can select multiple uh, options. You don't have to select the same options in each, in each um, section of content. You can create multiple graphs. You can create one time period. Um, 
And then also you can select, you know, the upper down arrows to kind of move the content around the report. So I have an example already pre-built or generated. Here is the report. This is the, um, the time stats table here. Uh, I'm showing total count, handle count, and abandoned count. Like for example, uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, there were seven total calls. One call was handled, six were abandoned. Down below here is the chart. Um, it's based on the same data. So like here at 10 o'clock, you'll see the, um, the seven total calls, the six abandoned calls, and then the one, one handled count. And then below here, you'll see the summary stats table. This is um, you know what was available prior to, to, to 12 2 where everything is grouped. So you see the, the total counts, handle count, and the band count, because this was for um, the entire day of August 18th. So everything's, everything's lumped together. Um, and go back. Um, all of your reports, if you have contact center reports already created in the system, they will all be converted to this, to this type of format or this type of uh, uh, configuration. The output of the reports will not change. It will be the same. Okay, jumping over to um, feature number four. This is the custom labels. Um, in my version, my pre-release version, it's only it's only working in the Cisco CDR, but it will be available for both Cisco CDR and UCCX. Let me jump back to the UCM cluster. And under the configuration settings, now we have a new option called custom label sets. What this will allow you to do is to um, kind of overlay a set of labels on top of the um, the the values in the fields that we already have. Right? For example, let this one here. So in our software, the the number that dials into the phone system or that, that places the call is called the calling party number. Now, if you've worked with Cisco CDR, you understand what this means. If you're a user who hasn't had a lot of experience, maybe a manager or end user who hasn't really worked with Cisco CDR, you know this this may not mean a lot to you. So now we have the ability to apply a label to it. So when you run the report and you select this label set, instead of the column or the field coming up as calling party number, it will now show up as whatever you put here. In this example here, it will show up as the from extension. I have daytime origination will now be displayed as call origination time, you know, dialed CUCM and user ID will be displayed as dialed user. This is you know, really helpful just to kind of clear up some of the attributes and some of the naming convention that, we, that we're pulling from Cisco. So a quick example, um, I, so when you run a report and you go to generate it, and this is also will apply to scheduled reports as well, um, you'll see a new dropdown called label set. System default is what we currently have. This is everything that you've seen you know, prior to 12.2. Um, here, I can select my custom set. You can create multiple sets um, with different configurations. Like if you have one report where you need one set of values or you have maybe a couple of users that have one set of terminology and a couple of users that have a different set, and uh, then here you can turn on um, custom labels. This is just oh, the custom label appendix. This, this will show like the person reading the report, you know, especially if, if you're if you're sending a report to us for troubleshooting, this will let us know, you know, how the columns have been renamed. And I've got an example here of a report run or generated with the labels and one without. So here's the report without. Everything in the detail is the same as what you'd expect to see, you know, daytime origination. Here's a calling party number. Everything is standard. And then this report here, scrolling down, it's the exact same report for the same time range, uh, but now the columns have been renamed. So now you're seeing call origination time, instead of calling party number, you're seeing from extension, you know, instead of originating device name, we're displaying calling device. Okay, and you can also apply it um, throughout the system as well. So if you, if you edit your user, you'll see a new option for, um, the call analytics label set, you can create now, the, the sets are separated. So you have one set for CUCM and one set for UCCX because the terminology is different or the, uh, the, 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 the values in the fields are different. So if I change system defaults to custom set one and save it, now if I go into like call history, you'll see in the drop down instead of calling party number, um, now we have from extension. And when selecting from extension, if we add the criteria and we hover over it, it'll tell us, hey, this 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 is the custom label for the calling party number. The the field you know responds, it searches, it acts the exact same way as calling party number. It's just an, a, a label on top of the, the name that makes it easier to understand and easier to read. Um, and in these um, the custom label sets will all, can also be applied to dashboard widgets. 
it can be uh, applied to call history and, and call reports and also uh, configure or add it to reports um, generated on a schedule. You can also limit uh, the custom labels seen by a user. So if we go ahead and add a new user, turn on add a cluster and uh, call analytics reporting, you'll see it here below. Call analytics settings. Now you can assign you know multiple custom sets or specific label sets you know to a user or to multiple users. Okay, perfect. All right, and that kind of uh, demonstrates the top four new features for twelve two. A couple other things worth pointing out. Um, twelve two will also be um, as of twelve two we will only be supporting call managers version nine and above which means that anything, you know, version eight or earlier will no longer support. I mean, we'll still support, you know, CCX and everything else just for, for call manager, only version nine and above. And also new for um, 12.2, we made some changes to the, let me make it bigger, to the alerts. We've now added um, ring time, date time connect, so ring time here, um, date time connect, comment and call scenario type to the alert. All right, and then uh, I guess back to you, Matt, for any uh, Q&A. Awesome, great job, Mike, thank you. Good job as always. All right, we will segue now into the Q&A session of the webinar today. So if anyone has any questions on any of the new features Mike has just displayed for us and tested for us, feel free to go ahead and ask them in the Q&A panel in the bottom right-hand corner. Once again, that is not the WebEx chat, that is the Q&A panel. Um, looks like we have a couple of questions, and actually, I think you actually answered a couple of them. Um, Bill was looking to see, you know, to break down his agent counts by in, in the CCX agent reports by day. I believe you kind of demonstrated that exactly where the time interval selection is within the CCX reports. So if you just want to jump back there real briefly. Let me jump back in there. Because mm -hmm. yeah, we can slice those just like we can with the UCM CDR reports, all of those time period intervals that we can utilize for those groupings, they will now apply to the CCX reporting in the 12.2 version. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Yeah, the time interval reporting is available for both the CSQ and the agent reports. Um, Correct. So if we were to do, to do like a, just the stats. Sure. I'll do, uh, so you pick, these, yeah, these so this is the agent reports, mm -hmm. um, and then you can pick it by date, day of week. You can pick it by both. You can pick it, you know, date, day of week, and week. Um, and then, you know, from the list below, any of the the, the options that, that you want to see. That would be of options for you. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, and I think one of the last points you had up was that you had a, uh, I believe, uh, one of our CDR alerts. You want to pull that back to the forefront? And we just want to touch that because Mary asked, how can I relabel CDR 911 alert content in the email alerts? Which you did just m m make reference of there, but I don't think you hopped into the configuration piece just yet. Oh, the alerts. Mm -hmm. Get back in there. So for the, for the UCM 911 alerts in the, in the analytics configure section underneath alerts. It may not be in this bill, let's see it. But we will have, we definitely have the cap, we will it, have the capability to talk to. Yeah. yeah, it may not be in this bill, but it, it is coming. So that we can certainly relabel just like those, you know, those Cisco fields like you mentioned, and obviously they would be embedded within the, uh, the 911 email alert content. Okay, thank you for that. Another question we have here from Jim, uh, with the new uh, C report repository, are we able to see reports that were attempted to run but failed? Yes, and actually, yes, yes, yes. Good um, question, I, Jim. I don't think I have any in here that will show that. Uh, let me get back in here. But the status should be yeah, pretty the status. Should, should the status right here. I think it'll be red and it'll say failed or, it'll basically, that, that's why we have the status. It'll say either requested and completed or requested in some sort Correct. of pictures that says it, it, it failed to run. As well as the beneficial information of those stamps right next door, obviously when the report was initiated or requested and then actually when it completed or and or failed. So we can see if, it, if these reports are taken at end of normal time to run or if they're quick and concise look like, like Mike's out here in his lab. Okay. Okay. And we have a question here from Tom wondering, can we do co uh, a capacity alert? Uh, capacity alerts at the moment, uh, Tom, good question. I don't believe we actually have in the uh, in the 12.2 release uh, capacity threshold usage alerts just yet. I definitely know that uh, additional expanded uh, 
alert enhancements are definitely in the pipeline, but we can certainly take that offline and get that answered for you. Question there, I can't see any other questions here. We're, okay, so Adrian has a question here for us. Were there any plans of expanding dashboards to show SIP concurrency without the need for running a report? Now, that is a good question, Adrian. I would probably have to uh, take that one offline to get that answered for you. But as far as you know, the dashboard, which is the, obviously the concurrency capacity utilization, which is definitely going to be the bread and butter there for that need. But as far as listing out the streams, whereas the report does, I would, we, can, we can take that offline and get that answered. But at the moment, it does not a, uh, a released option for you yet. So we would need the report if you wanted to see the concurrency and, and the stream usage and all of that good information outside of the, uh, the capacity widget. Thank you, good question. Any other questions anyone may want to answer, uh, want answered or asked? Please go ahead and do so in the Q&A panel. I'll give another minute or so for Q&A. Mike, also one thing I was thinking of, another thing with the, the custom labels, if you wanted to, since uh, you want to show them the, the data summary clipboard, it also makes reference of the, uh, the custom label search set that is being utilized at that moment on the cluster. Mm -hmm. Good points. And okay, they don't have that baked in here yet, but that will be in the data summary clipboard here. So we will be able to, to toggle for the admins at least, we'll be able to see what the uh, custom label set that's currently being utilized within this cluster. It'll be a, another line option on that that we'll be able to toggle for. The users will not be able to see, but most certainly the admins can uh, select their own there. Okay, any last questions, anyone? Adrian has one more follow-up and he's curious if there are any plans for us to have any reported on the Unity connection, similar to what's included in Unity. Um, Adrian, at the moment, I will take that uh, as a secondary question offline as well, and I will definitely follow up with you on that. I do not believe we have extensive reporting uh, Unity options on the, uh, on the roadmap at the moment, but I could be wrong, so I will take that offline to get that answer for you. Okay. All right, I think we are all done with Q&A, Mike, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the ball back from you. And get to the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the part where I have to remember not to forget to reshare my screen. All right, Webex, where are you? There we are. Okay, thank you for the demo. We've covered the Q&A, so the moment we've all been waiting for, the winner of this week's $50 Amazon gift card goes to, drum roll, goes to Samuel Bagley. Woo! Congratulations, Samuel. Your Verify account manager will be in contact with you very shortly to go ahead and get you that $50 Amazon gift card. Congratulations. I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Definitely a lot of Great new uh, enhancements coming down the pipeline in our new 12.2 version coming out next month. Uh, also want to uh, mention next week's webinar, which will be on LDAP role base access that uh, Mike and Dan will be headlining on that one. Uh, if there are any other questions outside of any of the content that we have covered today, feel free to, to, to communicate with us via our website, or you can dial our phone number, 855-VERIFY, or you could simply even us email support at verify.com. We can get you uh, any questions or pertinent information that you're looking for answered and handed over to you. So thank you all and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all.